Great Lakes Prepping here. Today, I've got another jam making video for you. And this time, we're doing a classic strawberry jam. This is a pretty easy jam to make, and there are a few steps to do, but they're all pretty straightforward. There's only four ingredients in this recipe. Strawberries, sugar, fruit pectin, and lemon juice. So we're starting with a whole lot of strawberries, and this is just about four and a half pounds, or I should say it will be after I take the leaves off of them and core them out just a little bit here and get them ready. What we're aiming for is to have about four and a half cups of these strawberries after they've been sort of mashed up, or in our case, run through the food processor a little bit. So after we make this jam, we're gonna be canning it in pint jars, processing them, and we'll have us some delicious strawberry jam that'll last us the whole year. As if these jars have any chance at making it all the way through the year before they're eaten. So I've got the canner on the stove filled with some water, getting it boiling so I can sterilize the jars. And while that's going, I'm gonna start cleaning up these strawberries and cutting them up. All right, we got our strawberries cored out and just roughly chopped up. And now I'm gonna put them in the food processor and just pulse them a few times to break them down a bit more. Now I'll mention that some people like to run their strawberries through a food strainer or food mill and it'll really uh, puree them and turn them into just nothing but pulp. Uh, I definitely could do that, but for this, I find it a little easier to just use the food processor. I could also put them in the pot and use the potato masher like I do with my blueberry jam, but I do like my strawberry jam to be a little more pureed than that. So we're just gonna throw them in the food processor and break them down a little bit more before getting them cooking on the stove. All right, we've got our jars sanitized in the boiling water, and now we're gonna move this canner over and get our medium-sized stock pot on the stove here to start cooking up our jam. Now, a quick note about the stock pot. I've seen a lot of people seem to like to use a big saucepan to make their jam in, and I really think that it's beneficial to have the extra room in the medium-sized stock pot, because once you get all the rest of the ingredients in there, when you bring it up to that rolling boil, uh, you really don't want it to boil over. It's gonna create a huge mess and you're gonna lose some of your jam. So I think the stock pot is the way to go. So what we're gonna do is turn our strawberry puree to medium high heat. And then right away we're gonna add our lemon juice and our pectin. You want to make sure to stir this in really well. If you have any pectin clumping up, be sure to break that up and stir it in really well. And as always, I'll have the recipe in the description below there, but to go along with our four and a half pounds of strawberries, uh, we added a quarter of a cup of lemon juice. And I'm using, for this quantity of strawberries, five and a half tablespoons of the pectin. Now I'll mention that I use a sort of a big bag of bulk pectin rather than those small boxes that some people, or I should say a lot of people like to use. Now if you only have the smaller boxes, uh, this quantity is actually a little bit less than one and a half of those boxes. So you might really want to just sort of empty out two boxes of the, of the pectin into a bowl or something and measure out five and a half tablespoons you want your proportions to be right so you get a proper uh, gel when your jam sets up. So what we're going to do here is let this get almost up to a boil just as soon as I start to see it bubbling a little bit and then we're going to add our sugar. 
You see I'm just starting to get a couple little bubbles in here, so now it's time for the sugar. And for a recipe this size, I'm using six cups of regular white sugar. I want to stir this in very well, of course. And from this point on, I really want to make sure to stir very frequently anyway, because this jam is now getting very hot. And especially with all this sugar, the last thing I want is for it to burn on the bottom. So we're going to keep stirring very regularly. Now what we need to do from here is let it come up to a full rolling boil, a very strong rolling boil such that when I stir it, it won't knock that uh, the bubbles down. It won't sort of dissipate the bubbling, boiling jam no matter how much I stir. And once it gets to that point, we want to let it keep going like that for another minute, not really any less than that, a, a minute or a little bit more than a minute, and then we're going to turn the heat off. All right, you can see we've got a real bubbling boil going on here, and we're just at the top edge of this pot, and I'm praying that it doesn't boil over, and I'm thinking I probably should have used the larger stock pot, but this thing was just at the one minute mark of the rolling boil, and I decided to kill the heat, uh, and I don't think I could have cut it any closer on boiling this over. And what I'm doing now is just using my little skimmer utensil, and Trying to get off the majority of the foam that's sitting on the top of this. I don't really want all that foam in there. So we're going to move this over to the countertop and start filling jars. And now we're just going to take our handy jar funnel and a ladle and start filling these up. Both the jam and these jars are still piping hot. The jars have been sitting in that water uh, that was boiling not long ago. So we want to take great care while we're doing this. Now on our pint jars, we want a half inch head space. If you're using those little uh, half pint jars, you want a quarter inch of head space. And what that means is how far away your jam is from the top edge of the jar. And we can determine that with our little debubbler slash headspace measuring tool. And we'll look for the little half inch notch and we want the tip of this thing to just about touch the jam. And I need to add just the tiniest bit more for that. I'll just do my best to get all these as close to that half inch headspace as I can think by now I'd just have this down by feel, but I'm admittedly terrible at, at uh, estimating distances and measurements with my eyeballs. And we've got pretty much exactly five pints. There's barely anything left in this pot. Uh, maybe about three tablespoons of jam. So, so now we're going to take that same little tool and just sort of work it around the inner sides of all the jars. Just give it a quick sort of once over. And what we're trying to do is if there's any air bubbles trapped in there, we want to dislodge them. It's trapped air bubbles are the enemy of food preservation. We want those all to be able to escape out of the top as the canning process is happening. And we've got one more thing to do before we close these lids up. Using a damp paper towel and some kind of cloth or pot holder to hold this very hot jar, we want to carefully and thoroughly wipe the top rim of the jar Using our little wet paper towel, we're going to keep going around until we don't see any more red on it where we're wiping. Because we don't want any food on this edge 
while it's trying to process in the canner because that's going to lead to a failed seal. And I know that there's jam on probably every one of these because as you saw when I was ladling, it's not exactly the most clean process. There's no way to do it without making a little bit of a mess unless you're some kind of ninja, which I am definitely not. All right, now we'll take our sanitized lids and put them on the jars. Now for the rings, and as I always mention, we just want these finger tight. That pretty much means as soon as the jar starts to turn freely, that's tight enough. Now these are ready to go in the canner. And since these jars are of course very hot, and the water in this canner is still quite hot because it was, again, boiling not very long ago, I'm gonna use my little jar grabber tool to put these jars in. Now we need to make sure that there's enough water in the canner. What we're looking for is a solid inch or two of water above the top of the jars. And right here, it looks like I've got just about an inch. You know, I might splash just a little more water in here to be safe, but I think we're just about good. Yeah, that's looking good. Now I'm gonna put the lid on, and I gotta let this come up to a full rolling boil. As soon as it's at a full rolling boil, the processing has begun. And for both pint and half pint jars for jam like this, we need to process for 10 minutes. So it'll take a little bit for all of this water to come up to that rolling boil, but I'll check in once it hits that point. All right, here we are at a full boil. So I'm going to start the timer for 10 minutes right now, and we'll pick it up after the processing is done. All right, 10 minutes is up and processing is complete. Now I'll leave these jars in this canner for just a few minutes, five, 10 minutes, just to let them start to cool down a little bit before I bring them out into the room temperature air. Okay, and I'm already hearing these lids start to pop, which is the sound I love to hear. It means that the canning is complete. And as always, if you have any jars that do not pop and you can still press in on the center of the lid or if the lid comes off very easily, it means that for that particular jar, the canning was not successful. But don't worry, you didn't waste your jam. You can still use it. Just put it in the fridge. It's not shelf stable necessarily, but you can still put it in the fridge and use it in whatever amount of time you might ordinarily use an open jar of store-bought jam. Anyway, I'm gonna leave these on the counter undisturbed for quite some time, at least until they come completely to room temperature. Of course, right now they're far too hot to handle anyway. So yeah, we're just gonna leave these alone for many hours. If you've never tried making your own jam, I really recommend giving it a shot. It's not an especially difficult thing to make as long as you follow the steps and use the proper proportions of your fruit, sugar, and pectin. The number one thing people struggle with when making their own jam is that it ends up being runny and doesn't set up in the way that they hoped. And that's why you really have to follow the specific process and those ingredient proportions. And if after canning, you think that your jam looks pretty liquidy in the jar, just leave it alone for a while. It can take 24 hours, 48 hours, or even longer for some jams to set up and gel thoroughly. But even if it's a little bit runny, it's still gonna be enjoyable and delicious. If canned properly, these jars can easily last unopened in your pantry for a year or more. And as always, make sure to refrigerate after opening. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including more canning and jam videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.